ಓಂಭೂರ್ಭುವಸ್ಸುಹಂ ತತ್ಸವಿತುರ್ಹರಿಣ್ಯಂ ಭರಗೋ ದೇವಸ್ಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಧಿಯೋ ಯೋ ನಃ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯಾಂಧ So namaste namaste everyone today we are going to speak about Mahavatar Babaji greatest mystery in the source of Kriya Yoga tradition Himalayan Mahatma Guru and also okay let us mention about my personal guru whose name was Yogi Ramaya okay Yogi Ramaya uh, now he becoming step by step more famous but actually he was born 1923 and passed away 2006 and actually after he left his body now he is becoming more famous um he was really a great master and he was born in south indian state of tamil nadu second half of his life he spent in the united states uh found a few ashrams in Arizona, California, etc. and and he was direct disciple of Mahatar Babaji and number of other Mahatma gurus including Nagaraj Babaji and Goraknath Babaji he also met Agasti Muni so finally really amazing person i mean Yogi Rama um because his life um for me personally and for some some of his uh, disciples uh, so yogi rama was really linked uh, connected um, us with um, uh, mahatma gurus that's very interesting we have so many stories from different sources about so called immortal um, yogis himalayan mahatmas um, uh, and so many stories and um, mythology but the question is are that stories are real or is it just somebody's imagination how can we believe that okay some yogis in himalayas may you know uh, stay on this uh, planet you know like for thousands or maybe even for millions of years you know biological or physical immortality is it is it possible i mean do you know anybody who is physically immortal must probably not if we can't meet immortal gurus just like that then how can we believe that somewhere they really exist well 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 um if we have only stories then we I have a chance to suppose that all that stories are just legends wonderful perfect oriental legends uh, but um, you know we have um, examples when some uh, some yogis some practitioners may really um, meet quite physically that mahatma gurus and uh, that uh, is a uh, great examples for us uh, about reality of um this uh, tradition and one of them of course was my personal guru yogi rama back uh, in 50s and 60s so middle of 20th century yogi rama spent really time in himalayas in the area of badrinath and kedarnath and actually he was staying in a um, different cave ashrams learning meditation of kriya yoga and bija mantra tradition from mahatma gurus uh, mostly from madar babaji um actually yogi ramak was really interesting um, personality he was family person uh with um, uh, three children uh, two sons one daughter and um, um you know he was always um, interesting in a medical science uh, he was md according to the american standards actually he uh, received his diploma in, in medical in education you know like um in in india but uh, also in the united states 
And so it means in the 50s and 60s, uh, we can't say that he really like kind of spent more than 10 years in Himalayas. No, no, he was just like coming and going. Um, and uh, basically he was born in South Indian state of Tamil Nadu and mostly he was living there in Tamil Nadu, very south part of India. So, but in 50s and 60s, sometimes he could visit Himalayas like for a few weeks, for a few months, and that was not just his um, pilgrimage program, but that uh, he, he went there as a result of invitation from Mahadar Babaji himself. Actually, Himalayas is just like, you know, absolutely open area and uh, not only pilgrims, just at any kind of tourist, uh, they can easily go there and enjoy all that trekking um, and um, no need to practice meditation and ma uh, mantras you know you don't need to be a pilgrim you can just go to the himalayas and that's all but um, you know quite many people they uh, they go there and trying to meet different mahatma gurus so of course mostly it's never happened mostly of course i can't say never but um, anyway, um, uh, to meet uh, this uh, highest level goose, you have to be uh, ready enough and it must be um, like beneficial for your spiritual development. If you are ready, then of course you can meet them, but just go uh, like that, it's almost impossible to meet them. That's um, quite interesting, um, but before um, Paramahamsa Yogananda published his book, um, and that um, happened 1946, the title, of course, you know pretty well, Autobiography of a Yogi. Before this brilliant book, actually nobody knew about the existence of Babaji at all. No, I mean just public, of course, a small circle of uh, advanced disciples, of, co of course, always knew about him, but I mean uh, just the public uh, in India or in the West. And just after that book was published in uh, 1946, some people read it and then imagine, okay, all kinds of story about Babaji, and of course, dream to meet him, and some people even can um, experience some mystical uh, connection uh, with Babaji and it sometimes happens as a meditative uh, mystical experience, sometimes in a lucid dreams, so it's like different kinds of experiences sometimes happen with the people. And um, you know, um, for me, okay, when I just um, came across this book for the first time, for me it was absolutely obvious from the very beginning uh, that um, you know, uh, the Babaji's uh, reality. Uh, later on, when I um, came, uh, came to India, met different gurus, different ashrams and different traditions, that it was kind of surprise for me that really not everyone, even in India, believed that <clears throat> actually Babaji is real. Quite many people accuse Yogananda that he just created this imaginary uh, personality of Babaji. And some people, quite many people in the different ashrams here in India, they just suppose that the uh, existence of Babaji is just fake and uh, it's Yogananda's fantasy. Uh, of course, most probably you know about Madame Blavatsky, founder of Theosophical Society. It's happened um, back in 19th century. And Madame Blavatsky was direct disciple of two Mahatma Gurus. Um, and the names we know, that's um, uh, Mahatma Maurya and Mahatma Kuthumi. And even in that time, I mean the second half of 19th century, so many people, you know, actually public was divided uh, finally, and some people really uh, believe in uh, the stories given by Madame Blavatsky, and some people also accused her uh, in, in, you know, like creating the f f fake theories about immortal Mahatma Gurus, etc. And many people uh, suppose even now that uh, such a personality like Mahatma Guru, Mahatma Maurya and Mahatma Kuthumi does, uh, 
they're not existing really and just fantasy created by Madame Blavatsky. So the, um, uh, this is a, a rather difficult questions because if you can experience something easily, so it means you can easily believe into that. I suppose, I mean, you just look around, you see sun shining, okay, you have mobile phone, etc., et, et yeah, you can believe in all that, but how can we believe in existence of Mahatma Gurus if to meet them not so uh, easy? Of course, for me, existence of a huge number of highly advanced spiritual masters is absolutely real. Uh, stuff um, and I have my own also personal experiences regarding them but let me remind you that we we have so many things in this life which we can't touch but at the same time we know that this or that phenomena actually exist can you touch mind can you touch uh, thought can you you know touch soul so many 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 things which we can't really you know, touch or you know prove uh, scientifically but anyway we know about existence of the mind intellect uh, thoughts emotions soul etc so it means there are many things which we can't prove um, like you know physically but still we know that they exist um, some people um, already know um, me experience presence and um, yeah, invisible, you know, presence, sometimes quite visible presence of Mahatma Gurus, including Babaji. And actually, it's look um, like that, you know, we have a certain tendency which goes like that, that um, all that Gurus become more and more open. And it means um, uh, if we speak about you know, spiritual, intellectual, and vibrational level of humanity, it's really growing, growing up. Of course, we experience a lot of crisis and difficulties, including political, social, financial, etc. But still, the, the spiritual level of certain part of the humanity, anyway, growing, that's the reason why all that uh, Mahatma Gurus, they become much more, well, let us say, available, not easily available, but much, much um, easier, may communicate, and for that people use meditation, lucid dreams, um, many, many tools, mystical tools, yogic tools, and sometimes even uh, that meetings um, may happen even on the physical plan as well. Uh, of course, we have to be very careful because sometimes people really meet that uh, Mahatma Gurus and then and sometimes they just create fantasy about such a meetings. But at the same time, we don't need to judge somebody. Better to worry about okay, our own business. And if you're lucky enough and if you're ready, by the way, that's not the question about luck. If you're ready to meet uh, one of them, or maybe a number of them gurus, yeah, good of you. But better to be careful uh, while sharing uh, with this information. Because sometimes um, if you're experiencing something wonderful and divine, better to keep, to preserve, to protect that divine vibration. If you will just start to speak about it more and more, be careful, you can lose these blessings that's also sometimes happen. If you are ready to speak about it, it's really necessary. Then, of course, you have to share with these experiences to support other people, but always be careful. And, of course, uh, if you already now able to experience uh, presence of Babaji and other <clears throat> Mahatma Gurus uh, while meditating or lucid dreams or maybe even physically. Again, better to be careful because it doesn't mean that you are a direct disciple with a special mission, blah, blah, etc. Um, you know, what's happened to become direct disciple of Mahatma Gurus, it's not an easy question because please remember that who were direct disciples of Babaji, for example, both the Shakyamuni and Jesus the Christ. So be careful not to put yourself on the same level. Anyway, uh, we are living in a wonderful time when all that Supreme Masters become like, more open to communicate with us 
and if you are open in your heart and mind so you can experience and continue to experience all this uh, divine blissful presence of the masters okay let me complete this video for today of course i invite you to watch my other videos leave your comments that's very important for me okay god bless you see you next time Suhaham Tat Savitur Harinyam Bharago Devasya Nimahi Diyo Yonak Prachodayantam